Hello everyone, you're welcome to this week's Tech Tuesdays webinar on ADC Data Domain Best Practices. I am Rinda, your host for today's session. The presenter for the session is Hari Krishna Akula, Senior Consultant with more than 13 years of experience in data integration, analytics, business information management, data warehousing, and data governance. Before we start this webinar, let's go through some housekeeping tips. The webinar is scheduled for one hour that includes a 15 minutes Q&A. You can post your queries in the Q&A box. Dial-in participants will be muted for the entire session. The session is being recorded and will be available in the Informatica Support YouTube channel and the Success Portal. You'll be able to download the slide deck from the Success Portal as well. You can also put in your feedbacks and suggestions for the session in the post-webinar survey. The Tech Tuesdays webinars are hosted within the Success Portal, which is a microlearning platform that offers free and unlimited learning to all registered users. This feature-rich platform was launched to help you learn and use Informatica products better. We have launched a data governance learning path in the Success Portal that will enable you to implement data-centric approach to compliance based on your role. Here are a few important links that you can go over later that will help you in your product adoption journey with Informatica. Over to you, Harry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rinda. Um, hello, everyone. Today's, uh, like Rinda mentioned, today's uh, session is about EDC data domain best practices. The agenda for today is data domain overview and data domain types and then best practices. First couple of slides, few slides, I'll be going over the data domain concepts and types uh, to give some idea about data domains before going into the best practices. Um, and uh, to clarify uh, for uh, the participants, this is not a demo on the data domain creation or custom data domain creation, not going into the EDC um, tool or EDC administrator to talk about or show you guys how to create, but this is more focused on best practices uh, for data domain implementation. Okay, um, let's start with the uh, discussion uh, with the overview. So data domain, uh, EDC data domains, before go uh, in into the data domain uh, overview or the concept, um, I want to highlight that not to this is a EDC, Informatica EDC, Enterprise Data Catalog terminology, not to be confused with the common use of the term, industry term, uh, which might be used to denote some subject areas like uh, product, vendor, extra. Also, if you are using um, Axon, um, uh, Informatica Axon, which is our data governance um, tool, and uh, it has it terminology called domain for uh, one of the glossary types. Don't get confused with that one. We are talking about EDC data domains here. So um, to start with, right, like uh, if you are using EDC, you might just scan your data sources to get your metadata. On top of it, we recommend to enrich your metadata to give your users more, uh, more understanding, give, give you more business, uh, meaning or functional meaning of your metadata, like columns, names, you might see out of the scanning, you might see column names, table names, extra. But we want you to enrich that information um, so that uh, with more business and functional uh, uh, knowledge, right? Uh, so that the users get more out of your metadata. That's where the uh, data domains comes into picture, right? EDC data domains is one of the enrichment option. It enables, uh, you and your users to get more functional meaning of your columns, uh, tables, extra, right? To give an example, let's say you have um, scanned your legacy system or your database system where uh, there's a comment column. It might be showing, um, the column name might be column comment underscore text, right? By looking at comment underscore text, it, um, the column name, the users uh, would only uh, get information saying that th this is a comment text, but they might not know what exactly um, present in that comment text. Your comment text might have uh, might have a social security number or any account numbers in the comment text or a, um, any any other information, more uh, in, uh, useful information. 
you can utilize in this case you can utilize data domains to which can uh, where you can put more rules and execute those rules against your data and column names and that by applying data domains and uh, EDC can infer, look into your data column names and infer specific type of data domain. Let's say you have created a data domain called social security number and they used that uh, as part of a scanning and it goes against your comment underscore, underscore text column and look into your data in this case and it finds that there is a social security number in that column and tags comments underscore text column or uh, associate that column with EDC data domain called social security number. So whenever the users, catalog users, look into that uh, specific comment underscore text column, they will know it has social security numbers also. That kind of enrichment or functional meaning uh, will be available to users of your EDC using the data domains. So that is how it, uh, that is the concept of data domains to give you more business meaningful information on top of your metadata. How data domain works, um, let's say you are scanning a resource, you configuring the scan in EDC administrator. So you have to enable data discovery and you have to enable profiling. Mm, uh, there you would see a uh, column profile or uh, just a uh, column profile option. In this case, we are talking about data domain discovery. So you have to choose column profile along with data domain discovery option. That way, EDC uses the profiling information. So profiling gives your column patterns, what kind of data patterns it's available uh, based on your profiling samples. It will identify column patterns and value frequencies um, that information EDC uses. On top of it, it applies your data domain rules, which are part of your data domain. Um, I'll talk about data domain rules in a while in the next um, next slide. So it applies those rules and infers data domains for your metadata. It can be columns, tables, or your fields. For those metadata, it infers your data domains and associates it. Uh, associate data domains to those columns. That is how it works. Um, where you can see the data domains in EDC, whenever you have, uh, you are searching for your columns or tables. Uh, if you see the screenshot at the bottom, you will see if you are at a table level, you are looking at the columns, you will see data domains associated in for data domains for those columns here. Also you can click into that column and um, you can see the data domains. It can have more than one data domain inferred by the scans. 10.5 offers data domain as a resource. You can go into that resource, also look at what are data domains available and also different data domain groups and composite data domains. That's under a uh, way to look at the data domains. So, um, Curating data domains, right? Curation is another good uh, option that is offered by EDC user interface. Uh, we recommend uh, to curate the system inferred information, right? So EDC might infer uh, data domains, but your stakeholders like data stewards or data owners, we would like to have their say in that um, whatever the system inferred, right? A lot of uh, times we get this request by customers that we would like to have better control on what is system is inferring. So that's where you can curate, um, accept or reject um, the inferred data domains, whatever system is assigned, uh, you have better control using the curation option. Next, let's talk about data domain types, right? Um, so there are like high level, of, there are three categories of data domains. Rule-based uh, data domains, smart data domains, and composite data domains. So rule-based data domains, this is where you can put your different types of rules when you are creating a data domain. Or if you are using uh, out of the box, Informatica, ships, um, a rich set of 
out of the box data domains like 100 plus data domains i think now with the latest release i think it is more than 130 data domains are available out of the box so it has um, different rules so there are two types of rules you can have at a data domain uh, if you are looking at a rule based data domain you can have column name rule which is also called metadata based rule or data rule so data rule you understand that it goes against your data, but your logic you're putting as part of data rule goes and executes against your data. On the other hand, your metadata rule or column name rule goes against your column name and try to infer your data domain using that. And again, you can use out of the box Informatica um, shipped data domains with those rules or you can create your own data domain. So custom data domains also under option that you can create with the rules. So there are like three type of rules. You can have simple or complex uh, regular expressions put into your um, data rules, um, put into your rule. Uh, that is one type of rule you can use. Reference table, let's say you have set of, final set of uh, data values that you would like to use for uh, comparing your data against, you can use the reference table based rule. And the next one is maplet based rule. This is where you can use Informatica's developer tool and analyst tool uh, to come up with a more complex rule, a more logic with more regular expressions, reference tables, multiple steps of um, uh, complex logic uh, to be applied. Uh, created as a rule to be applied and used as part of the data domain. So this is about rule-based data domain. Next uh, are the smart data domains. These are also called example-based data domains. These do not have any rules. And the best thing about smart data domains is users or data stakeholders, like data owners and data stewards, whenever they are um, looking or reviewing the um, scanned information in uh, EDC, they get um, an option. They have an option to on the fly create a data domain. They don't need to wait for administrators, EDC administrators to make data do domains available for them. But on the fly, they can create data domains. Here you can see this uh, snippet showing before and after and during the smart domain data, uh, data domain creation. So this is all happens in the EDC catalog UI. So you don't need administrator help over here. Only um, uh, that um, the users, uh, the stewards, they can create uh, on the fly. The other good feature of smart data domains is that um, you can propagate these domains to similar columns. So EDC has a similarity discovery option, right? Uh, if you're familiar, familiar with the similarity discovery, what it does is it will try to find the similar columns. If you have a one column, it has other similar columns. So EDC, if you enable similarity discovery, it will mm, find and show you the similar columns in EDC catalog UI. So if you have smart data domain set for one of these columns, and if you use the similarity discovery job and data domain propagation job um, uh, in conjunction with smart data domains, it will propagate this tag data domain to other similar columns. So it will save a lot of efforts uh, in um, associating and enriching other similar columns in EDC. That is very, a uh, good feature of smart data domains and EDC similarity profiling. So I'll talk about uh, more on this uh, in later sessions when I'm talking over the best practices. So composite data domains, right? Um, so it's a um, collection of other data domains or other data composite data domains. Here you can see an example of a composite data domain where you select other uh, with under uh, combinations. Uh, you can select multiple data domains uh, to create a composite data domains. The use of composite data domains will be, you can have one composite data domain created and use that composite data domain tag to your tabular assets in ADC. For example, you have a person's table on the right hand side. You can see there's a person's table which has um, 
not only uh, person information, but also address information, right? Um, like name, first name, last name, date of birth, and uh, address information. So you can have uh, a person um, composite data domain created uh, you, where you can put address, uh, first name, last name, date of birth, data domains, uh, and create this composite data domain. That way, the EDC can also, when you enable composite data domains as part of your scans, it will also tag and associate your uh, tabular assets with the composite data domains. So in this case, you can see that if you have an order table, you can utilize how you can utilize the composite data domain. You can create an order table, uh, you can create an order composite data domain with all this different uh, data domains or um, other composite data domains to tag your tabular assets with composite data domain. Yeah, before going to um, best practices, I want to um, add one more point to you, the composite data domains. Um, not to confuse uh, this data composite data domains with the groups, right? Uh, you might have a set of uh, data domains created as a group, data domain group in EDC. Data domain groups are um, useful for your maintenance. When you are scanning a resource, when you are selecting set of data domains, you can select a set of um, selected groups that way you don't, that's better maintenance, not uh, for actual implementation. So composite data domains are used um, to infer and associate your tabular level assets, but com data domain groups are just for maintenance. Okay, let's go into the data domain best practices. Um, I forgot to mention if you have any questions, keep posting them in a Q and A session, um, try to answer them. So let's talk about data domain best practices. So first thing we'll uh, like to point out here are, um, is that understand your data and apply your right methodology. Like if you're creating a, or creating a custom data domain and try to understand what type of data you're going to against and, uh, and use the specific uh, right set of uh, methodology or rules for your data uh, domain, custom data domain, that way you get better results. So in this example, here it is talking about numeric data, alphanumeric data, different uh, characteristics of your data. It can be discrete or continuous numbers, or it can be nominal, ordinal, alphanumeric uh, values. So it can be dates and binary numbers, uh, binary values. So in this case, uh, try to get understanding your data that you are going to apply your data domains and use the right methodology. So let's take an example. Let's say you have a part number or uh, uh, any specific number that is uh, created using organization specific rules, right? Um, and the, because you have organization specific rules, uh, you might also have specific naming standards for your column names. So in that case, you can go with that, try to use, utilize the organization specific rules as part of your mapping um, rule. Uh, that way you put that logic, organization uh, specific logic into your mapping so that it goes against your data and identifies your uh, uh, data with the correct data domain. And also um, use your metadata rule or column name rule along in the combination of your uh, mapping rule. It, uh, it gives better results uh, if you use in this case, both this combination. But on the other hand, uh, let's take an example here. Let's say we are working on um, a alphanumeric data and um, there is no organization specific rules for that alphanumeric data. And, uh, and it, that data might overlap with other data elements very highly on in your organization, right? In that case, having um, a just column name rule, try to have your column name rule uh, 
where uh, for the identifying your data domain for this type of data elements right so in this is what um, this is a let me go into the next section where i have more details or more examples of uh, different types of data and what is the right methodology to use um, what is the right rule to use so i already talked about a part number example let me um give you another example credit card numbers right you can just use regular expression um, to identify credit card numbers um, if you have let's take another example here um if you have continuous numbers right which are not random numbers and there's no uh, organization specific rules um, you can have just metadata rule which is column name rule to identify those type of uh, um, data elements and associate them with the right data domain. And uh, if you have alphanumeric data and it can be nominal data or ordinal data, in this case, uh, we would like to recommend you to look at your characteristics of your data, right? Is it um, your data unique? Uh, unique data or is it or and also is it your data values overlapping with other data elements in your organization so if your overlapping is high low or none and if your organization specific rule these kind of characteristics uh, take a uh, try to understand your data using these characteristics and apply the right methodology right um, if you if you have unique rule uh, so if you have unique data and it is not overlapping with other data, you can just go with the regular expression rule to identify uh, your data domain for those data elements. But if you have uh, unique values uh, with low overlapping uh, values, then uh, better to use the reference table where you'll have set of data, unique data to go against. If it is high, go with the metadata rule. Same with the date, dates. Um, if you you might have a lot of different dates, like date of birth, order date, purchase date, all this um, different dates in the organization. Again, take a look at how these are, what is the characteristics of your data, um, use the right methodology. Um, so reference table is always helpful if you have a unique values and low overlapping. But if you have a high overlapping, uh, most of the cases you would have high overlapping when it comes to dates. Uh, so better to use the metadata rules uh, there. But if you have any dates that are organization specific uh, rules, uh, then use both metadata rule and uh, uh, maplet rules. Uh, then uh, binary data, right? You have binary data like one, zero, true, false, flag access or no so try to use metadata rule and reference table rule for that uh, kind of data to identify your data domains and associate so that is about uh, the different data domains and characteristics uh, how you can use the right methodology to get the right results out of your data domains Like I mentioned before, uh, this is uh, in this section, in this slide, I'm talking about, I'm gonna talk about uh, column similarity and its role in smart data domain propagation. I already gave some uh, overview in the previous uh, slides. So EDC has a artificial intelligence um, along with it, artificial intelligence engine, which is called Clare, right? Um, Clare has its own um, unsupervised clustering. Um, it uses these four factors to identify similar columns, right? Uh, name similarity is one option, one factor. Pattern similarity is another factor. Value frequencies, unique uh, value similarity. So it uses these four factors. Uh, the artificial in intelligence engine uses these four factors to uh, identify similar columns. So once you run the similarity profiling, it goes um, and uses these factors to identify similar columns. 
and on top of it if you have smart data domains um, associated with one of those columns you can run data domain propagation job which will propagate that data domain from one similar column to other similar columns and it saves a lot of uh, efforts uh, and resources so this is a uh, under pictorial representation of um, clay and its uh, similarity profiling uh, in the smart data domain here you see this smart data domains user can create and associate to one of the similar columns but the propagation will be taken care by uh, the data propagation job and behind the scenes it uses the column similarity done by the clear engine next uh, few more points on the best practices uh, so like i mentioned profiling is the baseline for your data domain discovery so uh, use the maximum recommended sampling option of our profiling to get better results 17000 is uh, the maximum value uh, we recommend use that one when you are setting up your resources configuring the resources that way you get better results for uh, data domain discovery another point to consider is um, profiling and data domain uh, discovery uh, these are like resource in intensive um, so we recommend to do the sizing and tuning of your edc environment um, i have given some references in this uh, at the end of uh, this slides you will see the references for your tuning and uh, sizing your edc environment so we recommend to size and tune your environment that way you will not run into slowness or any performance issues when you are doing the profiling and data domain discovery uh, extensively on in your environment data domain um, next point talks about uh, data domain discovery on test data or non production data do that if there is only if your use cases demands uh, for data domain discovery on test data because test data as you know um, will have a lot of um, junk data or not good data so you will end up having a lot of false positives if you are doing data domain discovery on non production data so do it only if it is needed by your use cases uh, unless uh, we don't recommend it uh, when you are um, setting up your resource right um, better to use only specific set of data domains and groups or groups um, not use all data domains just choose the ones what you uh, need for that specific resource uh, based on your understanding your data that way you will save a lot of effort for curation and also execution um, if you select everything all data domains you will end up having a lot of time to curate uh, unnecessary data domains uh, that you might not need so use whatever you uh, need when you are setting up uh, uh, data domains uh, in the resource configuration so work with your data edc administrator and have uh, provide the specific data domains and groups for those uh, data uh, resources that are being scanned another best practice is to use the bulk curation a little bit on the creatively um, let's uh, here it talk next few points talks about an example um, let's say your data is going through multiple uh, zones right or multiple stages uh, it is going from a to b b to c and if you curated zone a data uh, elements then you can take export of it and use that same export for applying that uh, curation to zone b as well because you might have similar data elements there a similar metadata and using uh, the bulk curation uh, to the zone b uh, will save a lot of uh, efforts there override uh, rules for data domains um, 
there are two options to override one is like conflict resolution option to minimize false positives other one is proximity data domains for tiebreakers so in the next uh, slides i'm going to talk about these two uh, options when you are uh, here like you see that when you are creating a data domain you have an option to uh, have provide your data rule and also column name rule, right? And you have a conflict resolution drop down where you can select these or select one of these four options. So take a look at these options and um, utilize this option to uh, um, improve the results or reduce the false positives. So this will help to resolve the conflicts between these two rules. Next one is proximity data domains. Uh, this can be used for tiebreakers. Let me give an example of um, before I talk about the proximity data domains. Um, let's say you are scanning a data set or a file where you have these four columns. Column one has seven digit numbers. Column two has um, first name and last name and department names. And assume that you have uh, three data domains, employee ID, node ID, and customer ID. Um, there are um, all these data domains have uh, rules which which talks which might have seven digit number rule, right? So in this case, your data domain uh, discovery might associate column one to uh, infer and associate all three employee ID, node ID, and customer ID to column one. Um, you might not like every data domain association and inference have a score uh, for it, right? If we use proximity data domains, let's say while creating employee ID and you uh, add this proximity data domains, department ID, first name and last name for employee ID, then your employee ID or uh, employee ID gets better score out of these three inferred data domains. That way, um, employee ID gets a better score and also acceptance. If you have this um, scores defined as part of uh, um, data domain and better score will also result into auto acceptance of employee ID for column one rather than node ID and customer ID. Node ID and customer ID might be still there, sitting there as inferred data domains, but employee ID gets better score because you have proximity data domains defined along with employee ID. In this case, column two, column three, and column four has other data domains. So employee ID gets better score and gets auto accepted. That is how you can utilize the proximity data domain for better results and tiebreakers. Yeah, that is the uh, end of uh, the EDC data domain best practices discussion. Here in this slide, I have a um, uh, few items or a few, uh, few points to talk about um, general information for custom data domain creation. So most of the times you would have uh, EDC and IDQ both uh, heavily implemented. You might have EDC in, in one uh, in uh, one Informatica domain, and IDQ in another Informatica domain with separate MRS. And um, in that case, uh, we recommend to use IDQ where your uh, business users and also IT developers can collaborate and come up with uh, better uh, come up with the rules for your custom data domain creation. So IDQ has option to create custom data domains, and uh, is a better place for creation and maintenance of your uh, data domains with the rules. Uh, in this case, if you have separate MRS, uh, we recommend to um, do the sync, import, export from your IDQ domain to EDC MRS. So that way you have one place to create and maintain uh, with your IT and business uh, people can collaborate and uh, have them implemented in EDC. But if you have only EDC, EDC also has a um, um, license to use IDQ and list tool and developer tool 
In that case, if you are creating data domains, custom data domains in IDQ, all you have to do is um, just run a scanner. Uh, there is a job, uh, internal job to make those custom data domains available in EDC. Um, so uh, those data domains will be available in EDC for use. And uh, other points here talk about um, business, uh, sorry, how to use developer tool and learn unlist tool and the administrator, catalog administrator um, to create custom data domains. So like I mentioned, use the unlist tool and also uh, along with the developer tools where they can collaborate and come up with better rules and uh, um, custom data domains. So in the administrator, in the catalog administrator also you have a option to create a custom data domains. If you are just using regular expressions directly, they can create admin, admin uh, EDC administrators can use it. But uh, uh, recommendation is to have them created in it is uh, sorry in IDQ and then uh, uh, get them available into catalog admin ADC. So that is um, end of the discussion. Uh, so um, I hope uh, this gives some good understanding of. Uh, EDC data domains and best practices that you can try to use for data domain implementation. Here I have uh, EDC, some of the reference uh, information like articles and links for you to refer, like sizing guides have given quick articles for data domain uh, and also composite data domains. Please feel free to refer to this. Informatica knowledge uh, network portal has very rich set of knowledge articles and information. FAQs are there. Uh, feel free to reference to uh, these articles and FAQ links. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we appreciate your feedback. Write to me or my team. Uh, I'm from customer success technology team. I can utilize this DL group or um, my email ID to provide your feedback. Thank you, and uh, we'll uh, try to answer your questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, it's a great, um, great to see um, almost 100 um, attendees joining this webinar. See a lot of interest for data domain um, best practices in EDC. Uh, we tried answering uh, most, of, most of your questions from our Q&A. Um, I, I think uh, what I see here is a lot of questions are around uh, the smart data domains and uh, the profiling. Um, the option um, for data domains. So um, just to clarify, um, the profiling is the one, um, the profiling results are used to uh, execute the data domain rules uh, and get the uh, inference and assign those data domains by the system. Um, so on the smart data domains, uh, the smart data domains, uh, like I mentioned in the uh, webinar, um, it utilizes um, similarity profiling. So uh, similarity profiling is um, needed to propagate. And there are, if you work with EDC admins, there are two um, EDC uh, admin jobs that can be triggered to propagate the smart data domains. Um, uh, maybe we can go through some outstanding questions, Hari. Um, right. So, uh, yes, there is really, a question yes, from um, Srikant. Uh, what is the use of similarity discovery? So, uh, this is uh, the way to detect uh, similar uh, fields or columns across uh, uh, scanners, right, like across resources. 
and uh, it, it is based on like you know like it uses the column patterns uh, the value frequencies unique patterns so it will tell you like if there is potential duplicates it's also used for uh, uh, detecting the uh, data domains as well so multiple uses for that uh, use cases for that like if you still have questions please feel to reach out uh, to us uh, we can have a best practices session on that, right um, there's another question uh, how I want to bring domain from Oracle I think I cannot read the full question um, so data domains uh, uh, rules are built in EDC so it is it works with any source type so uh, it, so of course yeah you can bring in uh, Oracle um, content like data, like any database uh, columns or uh, whatever you have scanned, right? So you can execute the data domain rules uh, independent of the source type. So you can go across and uh, detect uh, data domains for you, right? Uh, this is the question from Dan Gwen. Um, I hope uh, I spelled it correctly, right? Um, uh, there's one more question from Monica. Uh, Thanks for the good info. Would like more best practices uh, webinar or info. Uh, so there are. Um, so th uh, this this Tech Tuesday webinar will be shared uh, after this session. Um, if you have still questions, uh, please feel free to reach out via the CSM of your account, um, or you can send us an email to uh, to reach out. So uh, I think there is one more question from Vinita from Charter. Communications. What is similarity discovery? Does the data domain uh, propagation does not do? This is a very important question. So, um, so there are, as Hari mentioned in the uh, webinar today, uh, there are two ways you can do data domain discovery. One is through similarity discovery, which is also called smart domain. The other one is uh, the rule based, right? Um, so the data domain propagation is a system job, which uh, Primarily is uh, helpful for uh, uh, rule based, which which propagates uh, the data domains uh, uh, across. Right, so it it is it is a system job which which keeps running. So it you should see that running daily by default or something like that. So um, so two approaches. You, you just need to decide which one is the best suited one. Right now uh, the catch here is uh, the rule based one. You you can uh, tweak it the way the rule works. Now, similarity discovery is inbuilt algorithm. Uh, you you can change the weightages uh, provided by EDC. It is uh, uh, algorithm built inside, which cannot be changed, right? So, uh, and and one more thing to add, uh, a, a data domain uh, built for uh, similarity discovery, the same name cannot be used for rule based. So you have to use one of them um, in order to uh, execute, right? So. Uh, please please feel free to choose which one is the best suited, and of course you can reach out if you have any questions. I think we yeah, still have uh, 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 yeah, questions. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, sorry, we are not able to answer all of your questions. There are a lot of questions we are picking and choosing them and answering. Uh, yeah. There is one question from Sushil. Uh, what is what does the data domain sync job does? So uh, if you look at the last slide, I talked about uh, the sync. If you have EDC and IDQ uh, separate MRS, and if you are developing uh, data domains uh, and rules on the um, IDQ side, uh, we recommend it to export import uh, from IDQ MRS to EDC MRS. But if you have a single domain uh, for both EDC and IDQ, and if you uh, define the rules and domains on the IDQ, then the data domain sync job, uh, is, it runs every 45 minutes to sync the data domains made available on the EDC side for your uh, data discovery. I hope that answers the question. Yes, you feel uh, free to uh, uh, take any Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, so there is one more question from Srikanth here. Do we recommend data domain discovery as a scheduled event? Um, yes, and uh, also you have to uh, just uh, schedule it according to how your source system refreshes. 
So usually uh, the, how customers use it, like if there is any, like let's say I'm running against Oracle as a resource, if there is any change, uh, like let's say Oracle source refreshes daily, then it's best to uh, refresh EDC as well, right? So depends on how the source system is scheduled. So depending on that, maybe as a dependent one, like you can refresh on EDC side as well, um, or it can be a weekend one. So depending on like how the usage will be after the data domain discovery is executed, uh, you can plan accordingly on the scheduling. Yeah, it can be scheduled uh, to answer uh, Srikant's question. Um, yeah, there is a question on the uh, sizing uh, from Alan, Alan, um, if you download this deck, there is an option to download the deck. At the end of the deck, at the PPT, uh, you would see uh, some articles um, which talk about the sizing and tuning guidelines because data discovery is um, a resource intensive process. So do the sizing of your EDC environment uh, if you're doing the data domain discovery heavily. So um, like I mentioned in the slides, so we recommend to use 17,000 sampling option to get the best results. Um, but please uh, refer to the EDC sizing guides. Uh, we have tuning and sizing, uh, two different guides for EDC environment. Uh, refer to those links and you can also reach out to a customer success team uh, through your customer success manager. And uh, one of our teammates who are like more technologists, uh, we both are from technology team customer success technology will be able to help you with the best uh, uh, the undersizing questions. Yeah, so there's one more question from Ismahane uh, Shilhadi. What is the step that precedes the identification of the data domain? So this is a good question. So Informatica provides 100 plus out of the box data domains. Uh, you can leverage that. Now here is the big thing. So there should be a business driver for it. For example, if you are uh, trying to identify PII data for some regulatory compliance needs, that drives uh, the identification process, right? Um, like you want to identify and classify the data and provide a report for compliance purposes. That's one of the need, but there can be various ways that triggers it. Um, uh, what data domains to be um, uh, kind of considered uh, by your uh, business, right? Like from a steward or SMEs usually identify and uh, prepare these are the data domains uh, that are needed um, or, or you can call it as data classification as well. so hope that answers your question uh, yeah there's one uh, from Ramesh uh, Manchela column similarity and value frequency can these work together or independently um, yeah column similarity if you enable column similarity that is under enrichment option which gives um, similar columns. If you are in EDC screen, if you're looking at any asset, it shows at the bottom what are other similar columns it founds across different resources. Um, that is done by Clare Engine, but the value frequencies are done by uh, profiling option. And these two work independently. Uh, column similarity also helps um, smart data domain propagation, but the value frequencies are fed to the uh, rule execution. Hope that answers. Uh, so there's one question on how are the data domains created in IDQ um, are curated through EDC? So uh, that's a good question. So all the data domain discovery uh, we recommend if you have EDC to execute on EDC itself. So not on IDQ, right? So uh, EDC is best suited for uh, running data domain discovery. Uh, although in IDQ you can run it on a single table or or multiple tables joined through a profile, EDC is best suited one. Um, in IDQ, it's best suited for data quality rules and deployment. Um, so there was one more yeah, question on how can be an automated uh, way of um, handling the clear uh, curation. So if you can reach out to us, I think individually I responded. Uh, there is a, a POC going on curation bot, uh, which is outside of the EDC product, it's a utility. So um, if we can uh, reach out separately with uh, uh, account uh, uh, details on what you're uh, trying to automate, uh, it would be great. Um, yeah, the channel is through customer success manager. Uh, you can reach out to your customer success manager or uh, the account manager and ask uh, them to bring in the customer success technologies. 
then uh, they would be able to route these uh, your requirements to us and we'll be able to work with you guys. If you're not familiar with that option. And there is one question from Ajay. Uh, they don't see data domains. Uh, if, we, if it is a new installation, you have to import the data domains uh, out of the box data domains to be available. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is like most of the questions are answered uh, through our uh, Informatica knowledge portal. If you have uh, used it, be, uh, feel free to uh, search in the knowledge uh, knowledge portal like uh, any specific uh, instructions or like uh, commands if you're looking for. Uh, the knowledge portal has specific articles to talk about uh, how to import the out-of-the-box data domains or how to sync uh, data domains um, if you are to, um, if you are EDC and IDQ separate installation implementations. So these questions are like, we have some, uh, specific articles in our knowledge portal, knowledge.informatica.com. Um, we recommend, uh, we suggest to go through that and we, you would get, uh, we have a very good uh, um, rich information over there. Feel free to use that one or reach out to us. Yeah, go ahead, Srini. I'm just reading through. Uh, I think on. there is one more question. Like, I have access to create a domain rule, but uh, I'm not able to. So, uh, please feel free to create a GCS case. Uh, if you are having some trouble, uh, they can help you out in case there is an issue um, uh, in, in creating any uh, rules. Right? You have to log into developer tool, and then you just need to connect to the same MRS that TTC is built on so that you can create a domain rule. Yeah, there are a few questions around bringing data domains from other uh, tools. Uh, there's a question about uh, from Nagesh Babu. Um, can we bring uh, data domains from uh, ER Studio tool? Um, I think it depends from tool to tool how they are defined in the other tool. Uh, uh, can those be uh, repurposed to uh, use in the EDC? Uh, we have our... Um, Informatica EDC and Informatica data quality tools, which where the business use, users can uh, create custom data domains and implement them. Uh, but if you have a specific use case to where you already have a lot of data domains um, implemented, wanted to reuse them, uh, uh, that's a good use case. Feel, um, please reach out to us on, on this specific uh, uh, integrations, we can see how uh, these can be integrated and repurposed. Um, like we mentioned, Informatica has rich set of out of the box data domains. I think most of those, whatever you see on those time, uh, other tools would be already available um, in these out of the box data domains. Uh, we would suggest to use these uh, um, the out of the box ones uh, if you can. Yeah, there is one more question. Does data domain uh, discovery works with unstructured data? Yes, uh, and um, and it, it it should be mentioned in the PAM. Like uh, you can uh, see what kind of uh, file formats are supported, uh, or or any uh, uh, any any uh, format that you would like to see if it's supported. Please go through PAM, and any performance considerations. It 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 uh, applies. Uh, the same as what Harry mentioned earlier, the overall performance and tuning guide, you can go through that and see like if it's sized up properly. That's uh, best practice. There is a, one more question on uh, what is data domain resource in 10.5? Does it come under system resource type pre-built in 10.5? Yes, uh, there are three to four system jobs, data domain, data domain propagation, similarity discovery, you should see uh, by default these are pre-built. It was there before 10.5 as well, so it has been a while that those system jobs are there, and um, it 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 is uh, triggered uh, based on like data domain propagation is usually daily, and if you want to do a data domain sync, you can use the data domain system job. So uh, there is user guide in the docs page on uh, what each system job does, um, and just give examples for a couple of them. Yeah, I think uh, the question is about the data domain resource in 10.5. Data domains, uh, uh, it shows as a resource in EDC, like any other resource. Uh, that way, yes, um, those are custom resources. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. 
other question I see there from Srikanth. Do we recommend data domain discovery as scheduled event or ad hoc event? Um, this like data domain, um, yeah, it is better to schedule and then curate because it has the curation also. So give it that, give it a time uh, for the curation to be happen, and then uh, before you run for ne next uh, scheduled data discovery or data domain discovery. So. Uh, have a set of time time set for the curation for the stakeholders also. Um, so you can schedule, but also have uh, time uh, all all allocated for your uh, data owners or data stewards or analysts to curate the data domains because curation is important part of data domain discovery and that um, helps uh, um, have them better control also. So there is one question on do we have out of the box domains for different geography or accelerators for UK or Europe? Uh, there are out of the box, uh, there are like uh, how, around 100 plus data domains. Uh, specifically by geography, uh, I don't think that is available, uh, but it, it can be uh, used uh, in general and uh, you can tweak the uh, rules if you want to. We could click on a, as a as a custom data domain rule. Right? Uh, there's one question on how to migrate data domains from UIT to prod or anything like that. So if it's a custom data domain that is built, uh, you can use uh, developer export and import to migrate from one MRS to another uh, in XML files. Uh, all those data domain rules can be exported as XML. Um, if it's a custom domain, if it's out of the box, you can just import uh, the same set of data domains, uh, what you did for UAT and prod as well. These questions, uh, Sini, uh, there's a question that can we uh, document these questions and answers and so that it's all visible? Uh, yeah, I think the a... team uh, does already. Uh, yes, I think uh, that will be shared with us. Michelle will take. Yeah. Okay. Think that will be shared by the team. Yeah. Yeah, Tony. I think Michelle would. Uh, she is coordinating this, and she would be able to share all these questions and answer at the end of the session, so that you get yeah. uh, visibility into all these questions. So there's one more question uh, from Tony. Just uh, uh, or are we taking up more questions? Uh, there are a lot of uh, questions. Uh, maybe what it would be best is if we can uh, get an extract and we can reach out to them separately. If, sure, sure. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, if you have their contact point, there are some unanswered questions. Uh, sure. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, thank you, Hari and Srini. Um, if you have any queries, you'll find the recording for this webinar in the Informatica Support YouTube channel. And if your questions have not been answered here, we will get back to you after the session. See you at the next Tech Tuesday webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.